My name is Robert Perret. I'm a professor of management at um, ESEP Europe in Paris, France. And um, when I was asked to talk about uh, cognitive neurosciences um, for five minutes, it was sort of like, um, um, as we say in France, uh, putting Paris in a bottle. Uh, but I'll do my best. Um, this is an area that I, that I teach at the executive management uh, and the ex executive MBA um, um, program and also an executive management uh, for people who are interested in, in sort of out of the box thinking about um, um, uh, subjects in general. And this happens to be one that's particularly relevant from that point of view because it has to do with human nature and the way the mind works. It's an absolute revolution taking place right now in the area of cognitive neurosciences. Um, because for the first time, um, we're actually able to uh, look inside the brain and see how the brain is functioning uh, pretty much in real time. Um, fMRI uh, technologies, PET, EEG, things like that, technologies like that have, are, are, are becoming more and more efficient um, and um, with a lot of software, et cetera, around it that allows us really to analyze what's going on. And this is going to have an impact on a lot of different levels. Um, but among others, in the area of uh, uh, in the area of business management, um, people are starting now to look at areas like uh, its application in the areas of finance and marketing and cooperation and leadership, and spawning new fields like neuroeconomics, neuromarketing, neurofinance, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, cognitive neuroscience in general, um, and I don't try to turn people into into um, uh, brain surgeons. Um, but uh, there are a certain number of general things now that we can, we can observe about the brain that we didn't really know about before. Um, this area is dispelling a lot of uh, previous sort of common knowledge that, you know, um, once you've, um, your brain is matured, that uh, all you do is lose brain cells. Uh, well, actually, now we know that the brain can actually regenerate and does actively regenerate um, uh, nerve cells, um, which is good news. Um, that we uh, think in a language, uh, like we think in French, or we think in English, or we think in German, or Japanese, or Chinese, or whatever. Um, that's not really true. We think in sort of a lower level language that we often refer to as sort of a mentalese. Um, and, and spoken languages have an impact maybe at a, at a later stage. Um, all of our brains are different. Uh, we've had a tendency to think of the brain as sort of a sort of like a piece of meatloaf, uh, sort of homogeneous, and, and that's sort of how we visualize it typically. Um, well, actually, it's a composite of a lot of different modules that interact with each other, and these modules are very specialized. Um, but one of the things that the brain does now, and that we know is, and we're able to observe and study, is how the brain filters and it compares and it categorizes. Our, our brain is a categorizing making machine. The brain has a hard time, in fact, uh, thinking in terms of variation. Um, also, the, the, the brain is a cognitive miser. Uh, um, it seeks always, and it's actually from an evolutionary point of view, it's been selected for uh, um, its ability to economize. Um, the brain uses 25, 30 percent of uh, all the energy that your body uses at any given time. Um, and this has a very, all these types of factors have a very, very deep impact on um, um, the way the, our understanding of the way the mind works and, and what is human nature. And um, therefore, of course, has an impact on management. Probably the most popular area of management training is the area of leadership. Everybody wants to be a leader. Who wants to be a follower? Most of the theories, however, that um, uh, instruct us on, on how to, uh, what to emphasize uh, um, for leaders coming largely from the psychosocial area, um, leave us with um, ideas like um, you need to share, you need to inspire a shared vision, uh, you need to challenge the process, uh, enable others to act, model the way, uh, even encourage the heart. And which are all very, very good things. Um, you can hardly argue against them. On the other hand, for the follower, what we found is that they're not necessarily very engaging. 
Um, and so where neuroscience can be instrumental is, is looking at it in a somewhat different way, in a much more empirical way, much less deductive, more empirical way. And, and by looking at how actually people experience uh, what's going on um, by observing what's going on in their brain. And uh, the emphasis, it, it's not necessarily going to contradict what's been said before. Uh, on the other hand, it may um, change a little bit the emphasis. For instance, um, uh, people at Arizona State, for instance, have shown that um, um, in terms of vision, uh, that um, uh, vi so-called visionary leaders have a tendency to use uh, very actively their uh, visual cortex, which is back here, um, as compared to other people. Um, so uh, how do we deal with that? Uh, how do we use visualization to try to promote change, for instance, in people? Leadership has to do with change, of course. Um, how do you, for instance, create um, insightful experiences for people? Um, that's been shown to, um, to have an impact on the way in which people um, um, act and the way in which actually the brain rewires itself. Um, how do you reduce discounting in the future? Uh, leaders have a tendency to discount futures less than, um, than, fall, than other people in general. So well, how does that impact our way of thinking uh, about, um, uh, about leadership and, and, and getting followers to do what we hope they're going to do? Um, how do you deal with things like dysrationalia, where even people of very high IQ um, actually don't either because they're cognitive misers or because um, they don't have some uh, tools, certain tools, um, actually don't actually carry through uh, activities uh, in a rational way. Um, how do you create, for instance, uh, um, chunks of anticipation? Anticipation has been shown to have a, be a great predictor in terms of the way in which people, um, what people are going to do in the future. And um, you can't give them anticipation all the time, sort of like in a movie, everybody uh, laughing all the time in a comedy. Well, no, you have to give people a chance to sort of slow down a little bit before the next punchline. Um, so how do you actually do that? And how, how is that going to impact on your leadership, uh, um, on your leadership skills? Um, the importance of branding. Um, um, branding has been shown to um, have an actual, there's an actual physiological component to it. So, uh, um, cognitive neuroscience is, is coming down the road like a Big Mac truck. Um, and there are basically two ways to um, deal with it. It's going to happen, whatever the case. Um, uh, on the one, and, and it's very controversial. A lot, of, a lot of the results that are coming out are some people are going to maybe have a little difficulty dealing with. Um, and so there are basically two ways to deal with it. Uh, we can either ignore it, do as we've been doing all along and try to hope it goes away, or we look at it, pay attention to it, and um, find an ethical, moral way to deal with it.